Hey guys, so I've got another piece of delightful software that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So if you look on my Windows 8.1 desktop, you will see a few subtle changes. Uh, barring, of course, the two uh, applications I've got open. One is, of course, OBS, which I'm using to record this uh, very video. And the second, of course, is GNOME. And I'll get to that in a second. But you also may be noticing in the bottom left hand corner, that the, uh, the logo there is a little bit different. Today I am going to be sharing with you a program called Classic Shell which aims to uh, basically restore the user interface of Windows 8.1. It works with earlier versions of Windows as well to something a little more familiar, something a little more traditional. It also gives you a lot of customization options which I will be going through today. So basically how I've got it uh, set up is uh, with the uh, the default classic shell icon, but you can of course uh, have the Windows uh, icon or you can have a more classic icon or you can have of course a custom icon. And then I've got a very, um, God this goes back to the days of like Windows 98 almost. Um, and then, uh, then I can go to my programs and then of course, I, I, you may notice that I don't have that many programs because Windows is not my primary operating system. It's mostly for whatever Steam games I happen to have uh, installed there. Um, but yeah, I've got to say I have been working through uh, the customization options of this particular piece of software and I've got to say it is very, very good. So let's take a quick look at the website, classicshell.net. Link of course will be in the description there. So Classic Shell is a is free software that improves your productivity, enhances the usability of Windows, and empowers you to use the computer the way you like it. And then there is, of course, the list of features allowing you to donate. Now, of course, if you've been subscribed to this channel for any length of time, will know that I am something of a big fan of open source software. Now, that being said, there is a particularly interesting uh, series of events uh, in regards to this piece of software. It used to be open source, but they have decided to, uh, in order to basically monopolize the production and uh, the monopolize the distribution of this particular piece of software, they decided to only make it open source up until uh, a certain um, uh, a certain version, which is version 3.9.0. We're up to version 4. Point something, if I remember correctly. Uh, and it says here it gives you a few reasons, which are reasons that I can kind of understand. It said, does say that if you really want to have a look at the source code, if you have a specific reason, maybe a security concern or whatever, then they say that contact them, they can work something out. So they're not exactly as closed source and, and everything as, as, as other pieces of software. So I thought I might just cover that quickly for those of you, because I know this channel is particularly in depth and it is for the... Um, uh, the tech buffs among us. So uh, it, the, the FAQ is very, very extensive. In fact, to be honest, this is a, a pretty good example of how um, a website for this piece of software is, uh, should look and the information it should provide, news, good description. It doesn't get bogged down with the technical details on the front page. But um, and of course, the donate button if you want to if you want to help them out. So, uh, yes, you can get it at classicshell.net. So, let's take a look uh, at some of the options. Now, the uh, tool, uh, the taskbar itself is easy enough to um, uh, to configure. You can configure it using the um, what you call it. There you go, the menu there. And uh, for those of you that follow my Linux uh, demonstrations, will know that I'm a big fan of the very traditional paradigm of start uh, start menus. It's, it, especially if you use like large numbers or like a, a, a wide selection of software, it, it it lays it out all here. It's very, very quick. And of course, you can use the search bar if you want to jump to the keyboard. Um, I think we, you know, I think we got it right a long time ago. But of course, with commercial software, they often feel the need to reinvent themselves to, uh, to, to, to give you more sort of superficial reasons to buy their latest version. But okay, let's have a look at some of the options. So it's easy enough to customize. You right click, you get given this context menu, the classic start menu. And uh, let's go to settings. Okay, so the uh, basic settings layout is uh, is here as you would expect. It's got uh, it's got some backup options as well, which is always useful actually. It is, it's, it's I, I, yeah, I like to see that. That's a little bit of thoughtfulness there. Uh, there are some advanced button options there as well. In fact, what you can do is, as I'll show you the advanced settings in, in, a, in a moment. So you've got the three main paradigms there, uh, which are the classic style back from... Oh, this, this is Windows 95, Windows 98, and I think Windows XP had an option where you could 
uh, select the menu to look like that with a classic style. This is the classic style with two columns. It's kind of a, a mix between the Windows 7 style and the classic style, um, which I guess works kind of well, but I'm basically, you know, this style of menu is giving me a bit of a nostalgia trip, I will, I will be honest, and I really, I was blown away with Windows 95. I think we all were back in the day, so... So I think I, you know, but I, I, I may very well, you know, I'm going to switch up the menu options over time, see what works best for me. I'm just glad that, you know, I don't have that horrendously big, uh, basically a mobile interface to be uh, controlled with my tracker ball, which is a very precise way of, of moving the mouse around the screen. It's very precise. It's got four buttons. It's, you know, it was designed for a very specific purpose and, and, and it was designed in a different context, not this context of, of touchscreens, because I, I, I do remember see it going around, of course, uh, places in the UK, like uh, computer shops like PC World, where they have big uh, big televisions, touchscreen things. And, and, you know, I might describe it as a mobile interface, but uh, I do know that, that Windows were, and, and they could very well still be pushing uh, a touchscreen interface as well, which, again, it strikes me as being a complete gimmick. Who wants to have their hand up on a screen all the time when you've got a mouse? A mouse is... is it, it, we have spent decades perfecting the mouse, and it hasn't changed that much because we got it right in the first... or got close to being right in the first place. My trackable is a little bit different from mouse. Anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, what, what should I do on this channel anyway? But, okay, so, uh, yeah, you can select one of the three paradigms. You can select what your, your button looks like. I like to have the arrow. I like to, to pay a little bit of homage to Classic Shell. I like to... To, to you know, I like to I like to fly the flag a little bit. I, I'm not I'm not a big uh, person for customization. I like to tweak my settings, but I'm I'm not Mister Overboard on that department. Uh, fair play to you if you are though. Um, of course, link to the website down there. The basic settings. Left click opens. You can have the left left click opens the classic menu. Nothing. Uh, and then start screen. Shift click. Yeah. So shift click will open the um, the window start screen. Uh, Windows key tells you what you can do. So you've got a lot of options there. Uh, you could d display sort of like the My Computer, the recent documents as a link or a menu. Uh, you can even show or not show the log off. If, you, if you're like the only person who uses a computer, you have that single sign-on session, uh, you know, the single single profile, then you might want to get rid of the log off. I'm actually keeping it on because some programs uh, like to be restarted and, and instead of doing like a full restart, uh, a log off and a log back on sometimes does the trick. Recent or frequent programs and uh, all that jazz. And then the skin. The skin is, is okay. I like the Windows 8 skin. It just fits in with the rest of them. Um, so you've got uh, all of that. You can, um, you can choose a different skin. We can go with the classic skin. You have to click OK. One thing I have noticed about this is that you can't click like an apply button and then check out the changes in the menu. You have to restart. That's a little bit of a pain. So that that is XP through and through, isn't it? That is. So that is that's an, but it looks like an XP menu on a on a Windows 8 or even sort of possibly a, yeah like a Windows 8 menu. That just that looks very eclectic. So we can go back in. So but it's it's, it's a minor gripe, especially since considering it comes to the same screen as um as the. Uh, as what you left. You can go classic skin, smoke glass, full glass, Windows XP Luna. Let's have a look at that. Gives you some extra variations there. Okay, yeah. That's not quite how Windows XP went down. No, was it? No. It looks like it, but what you'd want to do then with that is combine it with Windows 7. I don't know. I... I'm just sort of messing around at this stage, aren't I? I'll go back to classic and the skin. Skin, uh, Windows, Windows Aero, if you wanted to look, look more like Windows 7. But, you know, that's cosmetic. I'm not, uh, I'm not too hung up on cosmetics. That looks fine. What you can do as well, if you're, if you're a bit worried about the, the, the white on the menu, uh, looking a bit dated. I like it, it gives me a good contrast, but some people might want something a bit shinier. Smoked glass, I think, is a, is a good, uh, Yes, that does, oh, that does look sleek, doesn't it? That looks very, very polished. Nice, easy, clearly visible. I don't know, man. I'm, I gotta say, I'm, I'm a bit tempted. I'm, I'm tempted. That has tempted me, tempted me. So, um, 
that's just a bit of a brief, a brief uh, overview. I'm not going to go into the advanced settings, but you can, uh, if you click show all settings, yeah, you got a lot. You got a lot to 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 do there. You've got controls, specialty items, or special items. You have got the main menu, general behavior, how the search box works, the menu, sub menu width. You got language as well. So, can I can I switch to British English? Um, I like to spell my color with a U. E N U S. It's all E N U S. Okay, always, well, it's always the case. Uh, uh, most of the time I don't even bother to check. The keyboards are supported, that's all that bothers me. Um, so there you go, you've got everything. Windows 8.1 settings, of course, because I got the, uh, the 8.1. To say, oh, the reason I actually initially decided to, um, to use this product was because I really didn't like the active corners in Windows 8.1. So what would happen, in, well, what happens in 8.1, and I'm sure 8.1, 8.1 users among you will know is that if you go uh, if you move your mouse either to the top uh, right hand corner and then drag it down or to the bottom right corner and then drag it up or there is like another keyboard combination is if you if your mouse is in the top right hand corner and you press the windows key or something that it, it can it can bring up what's called a charms menu which is a link to the clock and the um uh settings menu and things like that and sometimes when I'm playing a game in a window, it, um, the charms menu will just come up and it's a minor irritation, but that's actually what, uh, what prompted me to get the, uh, I've known about the software for a, piece of, uh, for a, for a while now. Um, actually, I want to give a shout out to Dan Thompson, who, uh, who was the one that actually recommended it to me in the first place. Uh, quite some time ago, actually. So I've known about it for a while, but I forced myself to to grow to well to grow to tolerate the uh, Windows 8.1 menu because I kind of figured we're in it for the long haul. Then I realised, of course, Windows 10 is is taking a step back from a more traditional uh, menu. They're working on Windows 10 support for this, and what I like about Classic Shell here is that no matter what Microsoft does to mess up their operating system, you'll be able to have a consistent shell across multiple versions of Windows. I like that. That is really good. Whether or not you're running Windows 7, 8, 8.1, Windows 10, your desktop will look predominantly the same. At least it will act the same. There might be some changes to the to the to the visual effects, um, but this is pretty much a Windows 7. I mean, you could. Uh, it, it's not massively dissimilar to a to an X, XP layout, um, or even a, even a Windows uh, 98. Although I might sort of kind of be stretching it there, but this is. It's, it hits the nail on the head. And like I say, it's a shame that it's no longer open source. I can sort of at least empathize with their problem. Um, but again, I do like uh, I do like my software open source when possible. But at least they tried to pay homage to it. At least they sort of acknowledge it. At least they answered the question honestly. So credit where credit is due on that one. So um, like I say, I've got to work out, am I going to stick with this pretty slick glass? Or am I, am I going to go sort of like mildly old school with uh, with Windows 8? I don't know. It kind, of sit, it kind of sits in with the menu quite nicely, doesn't it? Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you uh, have installed it, if you're going to install it. If you actually, you know, l like let me know what version of Windows is your is your favorite in regards to its user interface in, in regards to the menu setup and the layout do you think we got it right with windows 95 like i do or do you think i mean of course windows 95 wasn't perfect in terms of its ui but it for its it was it was revolutionary for its time and um and and uh, and i think that you know 99 percent of it was was uh was fantastic with only minor tweaks really required for it to even be relevant even today you know things like a little search bar um they don't go amiss if you're if you're looking for a pro you know to, to save a bit of time recent documents uh, i want to work out how to get rid of this apps menu because this has got stupid microsoft products on it sound recorder sky who wants sky drive okay anyway that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching let me know your favorite version of windows in regards to its user interface was it 95 98 xp 2000 um or something newer like windows 8 windows 7 8.1 whatever so thanks very much for watching and uh, until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now